All right, hello everybody. Um, so our goal today is to make a perpendicular bisector using GeoGebra. Um, so you open your GeoGebra Classic window or uh, run the app, whichever one you have available to you. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is remove this background axes and gridding because we, we want to make this construction an open space. Um, so to accomplish that, we'll click our little graphic window here, um, select the grid to open, and then click off our axes. Now we just have nice space to work with. Um, to perpendicularly bisect, uh, we could do this with a line, but I think the task today is going to be to do with a segment. Um, so first we have to create the segment. So first grab your segment tool, um, select segment. Notice it says uh, select two points or positions to make your segment. So we'll just click kind of anywhere. It doesn't have to be a perfectly horizontal line. It can be tilted, no big deal. Um, you can make a perpendicular bisector really in any position. Um, to accomplish a perpendicular bisector, we're going to use circles, because um, remember, circles are going to lock distances, and so using circles to help us make a perpendicular bisector is definitely the way to go. So we'll come over here to our circle tool. Um, we're going to select circle with center through point. Um, if you notice the instructions below here, uh, to accomplish this circle, we're going to select the first point as our center and then drag it out to make our radius. Um, for perpendicular bisection, we want to use the same size circle. So we'll start by clicking A, and we'll drag it straight across, and then click on B to lock it in place. And then we'll make a second circle um, centered at B, and then using A as a radius. Um, so essentially what we have here are two of the same exact circles. Um, if we move um, either A or B, the circle should move together. That's how you can test to make sure your construction is proper. Um, if you move A or B and the circles do not move, that means um, you didn't lock them to the same segment radius. In this particular case, the segment radius I'm talking about is what I'm highlighting here in blue. And since it's the center of both circles and also defines the radius, these circles are congruent. Um, to finish the construction, we need to find um, some points to intersect. Again, notice it says select the two objects, so you don't really have to click where they cross. If we just click the circles themselves, those points will pop up for us. So we have one called C, then we have another one called D. And if you look, if we construct a line between them, it's going to be oriented perpendicularly. Um, so if we go to our line tool, um, we have to select the two points that make that line. So we'll click one in C, and we'll click once on D, and now we have a line that's going to be perpendicular. Um, I'm going to highlight this in purple, so that maybe it's a little more obvious. Again, to test our... Uh, our perpendicular bisection, if we grab B or we grab A and we start to move these pieces around, um, the line should still always be oriented at a 90 degree angle um, and should cut the blue line in half. Now to prove this, we can show some angles, we can show some lengths. Um, in order to show these, we probably want to go ahead and make one more intersection here of the purple and blue lines, just so we have a target. In terms of finding the angle, if we click these three points, uh, we can show it to be a 90 degree angle. Um, if you do this and it, and it goes to 270 degrees, that just means you have to select them in the opposite order. Um, so like if I would have selected C, E, and then B, I would have gotten this weird reflex angle. Um, no big deal. It's just a quirk of the program. Um, all you have to do is select the angles in the, in, in the opposite way. Let me get back to where I was. So by showing this angle, um, we could definitely prove that this is a perpendicular. Um, if we go to our distance or length tool, we can show some distances. So we can see the segment here. We can show the segment here. Okay. Um, so if you notice, both segment lengths, A, E to the middle, and then E, B to the end, are both this uh, very precise decimal value, 3.12, whatever you have here. Um, and as we move A and we move B, um, into different positions. Um, we should notice that these lengths remain the same. I'm trying to uncover it here. Um, and this angle right here in the middle remains 90. Um, and that's ultimately how you can test your constructions proper, uh, that when you we change the blue segment orientation, um, everything remains 90 degrees and the same lengths. Okay? Guys, that's it. Um, so to review, we make a segment, um, use the same size circle, drag it out to A and, and back from B. And then we find the intersection points to create a perpendicular line. Okay? And that's it. Thanks.